out of curiosity, man, um, after Tupac was killed in Vegas, how many times did you see Keefe D around Puffy and Von Zip? Well, you got to realize in that I'm, you know, I'm in Harlem. So Keefe D came around Zip a couple of times. You understand? He came around Zip a couple of times after Pac got shot. And um, I think I seen him three times. You know what I'm saying? I seen him at the hotel. I don't know if it was the what was, what was the Four Seasons. I seen him at the hotel. Then I seen him in Vegas. You know what I'm saying? And that's when Orlando and all of them was in there. And uh, I seen I seen him in the night of the vibe party because you know he came over by Big and Big I like he didn't know him. And I was like, Yo, Big, you don't know uh, Keefy? You don't know Keefy D? He was like, and Big just look. I said, yo, man, he one of the shot callers out here. You understand? And him and Big gave each other dap. You understand? So I seen him three times. You know what I'm saying? Three or four. I seen him three times in California on the West Coast. And I seen him like, I think twice in in New York. Right. So when you seen Keefy D at the Vibe Party, man, um, did you see him talk to Puffy at any point at the Vibe Party, my man? I didn't see him talk because... Uh, Puff had ran up to the DJ booth a couple of times and I went with him. Then when he came back and sat at, right there by Big, he said, yo, Gene, stay with Big. And so when he said stay with Big, yo, wherever he go, whatever he do, that's on him. My duty is just to Big right now because you, you paying me to stay with Big now. So I'm, I stood with Big up until the time we got ready to leave. So if he was running around and talked to him, he, you know, because Keefy D wasn't there. And if he was there, I didn't see him. So so then I guess Puff told him that we was over there uh, by our table. Then that's when I seen Keefy D. I heard a rumor before, man. Um, I don't know if this is true or not, but um, is it true that DJ Quick and some Pyrus press y'all at the vibe party at the table y'all sitting at? Is that true? Bro, let me tell you something. I ain't heard no shit like that. And let me just tell you something, man. I don't know what people uh, take what I do or think what I do has ever been a joke. But anybody who know me, who see me in action, who know what I've done over the years, ain't nobody pressing nothing but a pair of pants and a shirt. Cause they definitely not pressing me or pressing nothing I'm dealing with when I'm out there doing my thing. It, 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 if they if they if, if they would have and that probably would have saved big life because we would have tore that motherfucker place up and the, the, we would have tore that place up that night and that would have brought more police that would have brought more well you know we weren't safe around the police out there but uh, but it would have been something terrible nobody no nobody pressed our table man it was one dude came over from death row he had a burgundy looking suit on with a black shirt. Uh, and I, I guess it's a little burgundy like this with a black shirt and he had a death row pin on it. And as soon as he started coming up towards Big, I stepped from around Big, boom, what's up, man? He said, yo, bruh, I just want to speak to uh, Big. I just want to let you know it's all about the music with me. Dude said, he said, yo, it's, it's all about the music with me. So when he said that, I said, all right, cool. Um, I said, Big, this dude from Death Row want to holler at you, man. He hope we all could do some music. I guess he was a producer or something like that. I don't know. You understand? And Big said, yeah, look, I'll let him. And him and Big chopped it up. And that was it. You know what I'm saying? But pressing? Nah, man. Not at all. It's funny you say that, man. That just shows me that you be telling the truth. Because the person you referring to is Jay Flex. I did an interview with him like a year and a half ago, and he's the one that told the story about how he was at the vibe party, and he um came to Puffy and them, or he approached y'all table, and he was trying to work with y'all. But the person you talking about is a um songwriter, and his name is Jay Flex, and he used to work with um Dr. Dre. Just I was I was there the night Biggie got. I talked to Biggie twenty minutes before he got killed. And if you watched the the little interview with her with his uh security dude, he Gene talked dude. about me. He talked about me. He's like, dude had his little pendant on, and he said, hey, yo, Big, I just want to do music, blah, blah, blah. He talked about me, bro, and uh, I talked to Biggie like 20 minutes before he got killed, bro. Like, 
Because they was watching me because I was the only nigga there with a death row chain on. You know what I mean? So I, I seen everybody looking. So I'm like, I'm just going to go over there and talk to them, you know. So I just went over there. It's like, I, I just want to holler at Big, bro. And and this dude let me buy him. And I was like, yo, Big, I ain't tripping, homie. I want to do some music. Let's get together and do some music. And he was like, cool, holla at Puff, you know. And so I went over, holla at Puffy. Puffy was wrote a number down. He's like, call Bad Boy, talk to Derek. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, I'm going to call Bad Boy and talk to Derek. But, of course, I didn't call Bad Boy and talk to Derek after that night. You know what I mean? But, yeah, man, I was there that night, you know. I was the one who stopped him, like, yeah, and then holla at Big, boom, boom, boom. When, when I have a principal brother, I have a client, ain't nobody getting close to them until I mediate that. You understand? With Puff, I always could tell because Puff would look at me a certain way whether he want to talk to somebody else or he want to talk to him or he was good or something like that because that was always my principal. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, no, no. to get to your question, right? ain't no death row pressed our table did nothing like that niggas was mad because when we got there it was 12 bottles left and puff say bring all those bottles to me and he divvied them up to the other table where he had uh kim sally richardson some other women over there all at the same table and uh uh our table that was it Right, yeah, man. I mean, everything you saying, check out, man. I mean, Jay Flex, he told me that story about a year and a half ago, man. So, yeah, that is true, man. Let me just say this, man. I know you want to ask another question, but I want I want to be clear on this, man. You know, because I know the the people out here, those fans and those people who like that the '90s and everything, and then I come on a platform like yours, and I, I want to say I like the fact that you allow me to express myself and you allow and you allow me but you give me the opportunity to express myself and tell what i saw tell the stuff that i know and i want people to be clear about this man you know um uh i don't have no lead legency you know or no loyalty to puff all that shit went out the window and he knows what I'm talking about. You understand? Y'all might don't y'all might don't understand what I'm talking about, but he knows what I'm talking about. Because you know, a nigga that save your life, a nigga that do some things like that, you don't try to bury him. You understand what I'm saying? And he knows what type of dude I am. You understand? He know the fact that I'm not gonna lie to Big's mom. That's why he held that from her. But that's a whole nother story, a whole nother time. But he knows, and the reason why he ain't, you know, came back or said nothing, because he always nipping niggas in the bud. He always coming on and straighten people out. You understand? If they lying or they saying something or whatever like that, he not going to make that type of play with me. First of all, I don't play. I gave all my toys away a long time ago. You understand what I'm saying? Um, he not going to come at me like that because he knows the truth and he knows what's going on and you know he a public figure you know what I'm saying when he when, when he go out there and he lie and he say his what he got to say yo listen here man it's on because anytime you could get on other people platforms and say yo we was young we didn't know no better we we was this nigga you're lying and the truth ain't in you you understand what I'm saying and I don't want to take over your interview because this is your interview, brother. But No, go for it, yo. But, but I want you to understand this. Dog, I was around top gangsters. I made them feel safe wherever we went. I was around hoods and thug dudes. I made them feel safe wherever we went. I had one of the roughest blocks in Harlem on 112th and 8th Avenue. I ran with Slick. You understand what I'm saying? All from stars, Tracy Morgan, Alan Payne, all these stars used to come to our block and chill right there and get fish from my man Fish Store. You understand what I'm saying? They felt safe right there. 
I was one of the dudes that made them and helped them feel safe. So when guys come on here and they trying to play or, 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 or act like they know who I am and what I, I've done and I do, bruh, it's all a lie. It's all a lie when they, when, when, when they talk flagrant and that crazy shit about me, man. But go ahead, man. It's another story. Sorry about that, man.